What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and this week we have a new release announcement for you from Horizon Hobby. As many of you suspected, they've updated and upgraded the E-Flight 1.2 meter P-47 Razorback. The P-47 Thunderbolt was one of the most capable multi-role fighters of World War II. As a high altitude escort, it could more than hold its own in a dogfight. In a ground attack role, it was truly a juggernaut. With 850 caliber machine guns and a weapons load of 2,500 pounds, it was the A-10 of its day, and it's the reason that the A-10 is called Thunderbolt. This 1.2 is modeled after an early version of the P-47. Pilots called them Razorbacks in reference to the angular shape of the canopy. Kansas Tornado II was piloted by the first ace from the 510th Fighter Squadron, 405th Fighter Group, Captain Howard J. Curran. Let's get her together and we'll give you all the details. Horizon promises a quick and easy assembly and as you can see the parts count is very low. They'll start you with the horizontals, there's a single carbon spar and you tighten each side down with a single screw. Then all that's left is for you to put your clevis onto your control horn. Then you'll move on to the main wing, there are some servo wires you're going to have to put through a hole in the bottom of the fuselage. Then you'll secure your wing with four bolts and then plug the flaps, gear, and ailerons into the respective places on the receiver, and that's covered in the manual. You'll then move on to the propeller installation. There is a rear hub, a front hub, and then a prop nut that you tighten down, and there's a hole in the prop nut so you can use a small screwdriver or Allen driver to snug it up. And here she is. Worth noting, there's a pitot tube that you can stick into the wing and glue into place and you have a choice of how your wheel hubs look. You can go with the stock look or you can use a star sticker that comes in the airplane if you so choose. Horizon elected to go with the version 1 paint scheme so that parts will be available longer for the people that have those. However, there are two key upgrades in this version 2 that might make it enticing even for the people that already have an original. It now has the Avian 70 amp Smartlight ESC. This makes the version 2 P47 3 and 4S compatible and gives you the option to program reverse if you want. The other upgrade is the Spectrum AR631 receiver. You still get AS3X and optional safe select, but now if you have a compatible Spectrum transmitter, you get a host of smart telemetry. If you use a Spectrum Smart battery pack, that maximizes the telemetry available. You get flight log information, ESC minimum and maximum information, on-the-fly ESC status, smart battery info, a G meter. It even has gyro correction information and AS3X settings. The wingspan is 47.25 inches. It's 42.32 inches long. Ours weighs 3 pounds, 13.3 ounces, ready to fly with a Spectrum Smart 4S 2230C battery pack. It has a Spectrum 880 kV 15 Outrunner motor and is equipped with Spectrum A330 9 gram sub micro servos. It's intended for use with 3 and 4S batteries ranging from 2200 to 3200 milliamps. The V2 retains the flaps, the retracts with the two piece main gear doors, and the ground attack roll under wing stores. The rockets slide into place and your auxiliary fuel tank and bombs snap into place. One little bit of advice, when you're taking your bombs off, don't pull them by the bomb. Actually pull it by the rack itself, or you can separate those two, but if you do, gluing it back's not a big deal. The price point on these is going to be $349.99 for the bind and fly, and $319.99 for the plug and play. Setting up the P-47 as a breeze, the manual is written in the new detailed step-by-step -step format that makes programming a Spectrum transmitter easy even for people that aren't familiar with Spectrum. And it's a good idea to go through that process and really get comfortable programming your transmitter rather than downloading every setup. In the future, you'll find yourself in situations where being comfortable programming your transmitter will really come in handy for you. When it comes to the manual setup, it's a great place to start. We did deviate from that just a bit. We have our balance point a little bit rear of what the manual suggests. Keep in mind, it is in no way tail heavy, it's just further to the rear than they suggest. We also have more rudder and more elevator throw. We mechanically adjusted for that. And the reasons for all that are pretty simple. 
it gives us a lot more control on those long, slow scale takeoffs. It gives us more control of the tail as it comes down and we transition to putting the tail on the ground on landing and it helps us keep the tail planted taxiing in grass so that's why we did those things. You're going to see a graph that will show you exactly where we put our clevises and the control horns to get that extra throw as well as our full setup page that has everything you need to know about how we set our plane up right before the flying. So when it comes to the flying, we all know what to expect from these 1.2 meter warburns and typically what our eyes and promises they deliver with them. And we demo everything you'd expect us to demo with an airplane like this. We do some sport flying, some aggressive sport flying, of course, a lot of scale warbird flying. We fly it off of grass and pavement, 3S and 4S. With the underwing stores on and off, we do a stall test, a lot of flight footage here. The setup page is next then the flying. Enjoy that and we'll meet you back here and give you our final thoughts. And we're going into a clean stall here. And ever so slight drop of the right wing, but pretty uneventful. Now we have gear and collapse down, and we're going to do it dirty. And as you can see, it gets mushy and basically drops the nose straight forward, it kind of establishes a rate of descent, it won't stall. That's very benign. The Razorback handles taxiing on grass well, particularly when you make sure that you don't have your balance too far forward and that you have enough up elevator to aid you in holding the tail down when you give it a little bit of power. The slow flight characteristics are very good and as you'll see on the next pass, even with the drag of all the underwing stores on, when you press that throttle forward on 3-cell, it has a very respectable speed and climb rate.
I'm really impressed with the power on 3-cell to do big, graceful, scale warbird maneuvers. And something else that's impressive about this particular 1.2 meter warbird is all the scale details. The fake oleo struts, the two-piece main articulating gear doors, all the underwing stores, even the fake radial. A little bit of paintwork on that thing and it would really look the part. It's a really nicely detailed 1.2 meter warbird. We're going to kick things off here quickly with a punch and go. As you can see, if you don't want to use the rudder on takeoff, I guess you don't have to. Worth noting, the extra elevator and rudder that we have dialed into this thing for our purposes come in handy when you want to fly the airplane like this. This isn't how we normally like to fly a warbird, but we know a lot of you do like to fly them this way, so here you go. We're going to let her rip. As you're going to see on this pass, it will knife edge as long as you want a knife edge. This is such a great flying airplane. It's an easy to fly plane as warbirds go, and it's happy right side up or inverted. Here we're going to come by 
for a really slow pass, and keep in mind, this is the heaviest pack we flew all day, a 3200 4S, and it flies as slow as that as it does with the smaller packs. And when you press the throttle forward on 4-cell, it's gone until you just decide to stop. Here I'm purposely trying to get it to get into an aerodynamic or accelerated stall and as you can see it just grooved through those tight turns. This is not going to be my best three point but the airplane will do it if you don't screw it up. There's not really a lot to add on this 4S2200 demo flight. We're going to be doing sport and scale flying. The only thing that I can really say is that you've got even more power to make larger, more graceful warbird maneuvers when you want to. And we did add a couple of one-wheelers on this flight. Now, I've seen Bob Hoover do it with a warbird, so I'm assuming that somebody like that could do it with a real P-47. Enjoy.
And there you have it. I have to say a little bit of a personal note here. I have flown P-47s before, maybe an even half dozen different sizes from, you know, Park Flyer up to Giant Scale, and I have to say I've never owned one before. All those were kind of sporadic maiden or trimming flights for other people. This is the first one I've had an opportunity to dial in exactly the way I liked it, and I have to say I'm very impressed. It has one of the most benign stall characteristics of any Warbird that I've ever flown. I was pretty blown away by that. And when it comes to the power that the airplane has, you saw it on 3-cell. That was a heavier 3-cell pack, a 3200. We had all the underwing stores underneath. That only adds an ounce, but it adds a lot of drag. And this airplane had some zip even on 3-cell and plenty of climb rate to do pretty much any kind of scale maneuver that you'd want to do. I was a bit surprised by how good it is on 3-cell. On 4-cell, I mean, you saw it. It's a completely different animal. If you are an aggressive sport pilot, that battery is going to be your huckleberry, so to speak. And I have to say, we tested the stall characteristics with all the batteries, all the different weights. Obviously, we took it off and landed it with everything. There's not a whole lot of difference in feel. Probably less difference in feel with this airplane than any other Warbird I've flown from the lightest pack to the heaviest pack. It just flies good with all of them and you don't really feel much of a difference. There's not even much of a trimming difference to be honest. That impressed me. Horizon says that this is a skill level 2 airplane and I agree for the most part. That would suggest that it's a good airplane to go to as your second airplane if you're coming off a trainer. And for some people, maybe, for the more timid types, you might want to tackle another tail dragger first before you overwhelm yourself with your very first tail dragger airplane with flaps and airplane with retracts. Going to be a lot of people that will handle that no sweat, but for some, maybe this is a good third rather than a second. But as Warbirds go, I have to agree with Horizon. It's pretty easy to fly. And I think that the price point is very fair for what you get and for how it flies. It's just a good, honest airframe. We really enjoyed it. Glad to have it in the collection. And if you'd like to add one to your collection, we are a Horizon Hobby affiliate. There's a link in the description if you go through that. It helps support our channel, and we really appreciate you very much when you do that. Thank you ahead of time if you do. That's going to do it for us. It's a great airplane. We enjoy it. We think you will, too. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something else cool with wings right here on this bench.